talking about how I'm supporting a racist and black it's over for black people. If I vote for Trump, he's trying to throw all this uh, uh, rhetoric, jargon, whatever you want to call it at me, post uh, policies from Kamala. You need to vote for her. She wants to do this. She wants to do that. Hey, is he going to vote? I'm sure he's going to vote for you Kamala. Sure? Yeah. Positive. That's what he says. That's what he's saying. Because, like, right now, it's a, you stop, I don't care about political speech. If you don't get up and go vote, it's early voting time right now, okay? In Houston, if you got to ride the bus, you can get on the bus for free and go to the early voting location. Right now, we on the way to the Shrine of the Black Madonna, and we riding on MLK. It's historic. It's historic times as two black men riding down the street to go vote. You hear me? That's exciting. And if you decide to vote for, for a different person they don't agree with, they're going to get mad at you? Man, that's going to be wild, too. Like... If I were to cast my vote for Donald Trump at the Shrine of the Black Madonna, oh good lord, how would that? How how would the how would the ancestors feel? Hey man, look, all I'm saying is you need <laughs> to vote. No, bad. no matter what, no matter what, you need to vote because they have the exit polls. They know who's voting. They know how hey, many of us are going out there. He said, "It sounds so good, okay?" Hey, you know how Tiger Woods when he if you don't know who Tiger Woods is, Tiger Woods when he was going to win a championship, he put that red shirt on. Because it was certain victory. Hey, I'm telling you right now. I want you to go vote, but I want you to vote for Donald Trump. Hell yeah. Don't vote for your feelings. Don't, don't nobody, they can't call, call me any name you want to call me in the whole entire world. I'm a person with a ballot. And any person was trying to take that away from me, I said, that's not a good person. I'm not mad at you for voting for Kamala. Uh, well, what's, the, what's the lady name? I don't even know what the lady name is. Whatever the lady name is, if you vote for her, congratulations. If you get her policies, then we got to deal with that. And I don't want to deal with her policies. Me personally. That's me. I know what the policies are. That woman talking about uh, uh, communism. <laughs> they said, well, what do you mean communism? She said that she's going to have price controls. And so, like, I think that's a, a legitimate economic issue when the government can tell a private employer how they can sell their goods. Hey, so how do you feel about... So one thing that I heard uh, Tim Walls uh, going at was Elon Musk and how he's been... Oh, that's the VP. Uh, yeah, that's the VP of Kamala. Yeah, and he's he's has high critique of. Elon I think Musk. names matter. Oh yeah, that's not a strong name. What? Tim Wolf. Tim Wolf. Yeah, that's not a strong name. <laughs> it's just not a strong. Man, I don't name. like his policies at all. Look, this is what I was told. Tampons in a bathroom. Yeah. For man. boys. Yeah, dog. What are we doing? Yeah, dog. Why are we doing that? I'm not with it. I'm not with it at all. And it's like because I have issues on some of his gender and sexuality uh, legislation ideals. I just don't agree with it. And it's enough for me to say I don't want to deal with that. I don't really want to vote that in because I feel like that's going to be way more detrimental than Elon Musk trying to, you know, be in charge of, I guess, the... Hey, we we were just recording. You got to tune in. You got to watch our show. We got one of the most fantastic shows on YouTube. And we talk about politics. And as we talk about politics, we're actually going to execute our uh, political voice. We're going to go vote. I'm going to go cast this ballot. Uh, we got to vote for a, a senator also. We have a school bond to vote for. Man, I actually study too. So if you go vote, I want you to study also. Man, this right here is so exciting because like the energy is here. The gender war is happening right now in America. Uh, women, they said it's going to be the largest gap between men and women in the history of America. So, so many women, they finna vote come up for the, uh, dang it, man. What's the lady's name? Say her name. Say her name. I can't say her name if I don't know her name. And if I try to mispronounce her name, then you get mad. And so I don't want nobody trying to police my tongue. And so instead of you trying to tell me what to say, I just won't say it at all. The woman who should forever remain nameless. Huh? <laughs> because if she loses this election, they ain't never gonna remember her name, bro. I definitely don't think I'm going for Ted Cruz, though. I, I'm, I'm not sure about Ted Cruz. However, comma, one thing that I do see that's coming up is um the so Colin Allred would be the alternative. That's the Democratic senator. He's like a big dude, play football. Yeah, all that, and it is said that he um did not vote in regards to keeping sports or high school sports strictly just female or you guys like to say cis female i don't like that term it's like you're a biological woman so he didn't you know he's siding with liberal ideology that why you know, how come they could make me say that but the, use their words like know, how are they changing my language telling me what i can say how i can say it 
I don't, why are you telling me what I can't say and how I can't say it? I think that, man, that's terroristic to try to control my speech. I thought freedom of speech was a big deal. And I think right now on the left, I don't even understand. You might not agree with things that are said on social media, but you know what you can do? You can log off. You ain't got to be on social media. You ain't got to be on Facebook. You ain't even got to create no account. And so you're trying to create laws to regulate a system because you, you don't have control over it. And, hey, there's a lot. I, I don't like on these places. It's super hyper racist. They like to use the N word. Y young white boys like drop the N. -word. I don't know what they. What's the fascination with the N word? I don't get it. But uh, my question is, black people. What's up? If we're not black, if you know you're not black, if you don't vote for Kamala, what is she gonna do for this community? Because we're riding through a black community right now. What is she going to do besides make up a, a, a few ideas she came up with within a month? What, do you know what? I wish you could see it. Yeah. Like there, there's a liquor store on the left hand side we about to pass up. And then on, on the left hand side, we got a dispensary. And on the right hand side, we got a, a liquor store. I wanted to play a game. When we was coming down here, I wanted to tell you that uh, I wanted to play Count the Churches. Because I'm so tired. We go down uh, MLK or down Cullen or Scott. Man, you could probably count 20, 30, 40 churches. And I'm like, man, when that was the business plan. Everybody get a church. You get a church. You get a church. It's a church right there. Look. <laughs> <laughs> we just, hey, we just missed it. Everybody. A church right there. Let's man. see. We, hey. ought to, we ought to play that game. Too, too many chiefs and not enough Indians, man. And we're watching this place be gentrified right now. Man, you grew up here. I did. And you... And they changing it right before your eyes. I did, man. From South Park, grew up South Park, right off MLK. We are approaching the street I grew up on. I actually grew up across the street. This is funny. I grew up across the street from an A Better Bell Bun, an A Better Bell Bun, and I believe Rodney Hampton was an ex football player. That's that's his brand. That's that's something. Man, that you, he you know you know what us black folks need, man. We need a Bell Bonds, man. We need a liquor store. We need a wig shop, oh, huh? Man. That's the and, and thirty seven churches. And thirty seven churches, man. I mean, just you know, dilapidated houses, things like that. And Gentrification's gonna come right on in and, and pretty much take over this stuff and move the people out. And, the, and when I actually say that Timmy Chan's the original Timmy Chan's, I want to show it to you. We bought a buy Timmy Chan's. He ain't got that much relevance. But the line be low, all the way down the street, under the underpass. Black folks standing to get some of this this good old nasty greasy ass Asian food. And we patronize their businesses. We don't build up our community. And for me to actually talk about things that are happening in the community that I, that I live in, for me to diagnose the problem that exists, you say bad things to me. Right. But instead of you saying bad things to me, man, they're trying to shut down historical black college, uh, uh, high schools. They're trying to shut them down because they're underperforming. And so when you got an underperforming school, what do you do? They're trying to pass a bond right now. I think it's like $4 billion. And then over 30 years, it's going to double. So us Houstonians, we got to pay back like $8 billion. And as a voter, do I vote for the bond? Do I not vote for the bond? You continue to pour money into schools that are failing. As a voter, these are things we wrestle with. And I guess on the process of the journey of going to do it, to go vote, I'm like, man, these things are really important. And if I, and if I don't participate, what happens to those kids? What happens to the kids that go to all these little black uh, high schools around here? I mean, I hope that the money goes there. I think that's the issue with those failing schools is the lack of funding, is the lack of resource that they just don't have to be able to compete with other schools uh, in the district that are, you know. Now, what if I talk about social, social structure, you know? Uh, involved parents who help with homework. That's true. Who help with the discipline to create the structure for this child to be successful. That's true. If I say that, am I being racist? Nah. I mean, look at the numbers. That's what I'm saying. Nobody's addressing these issues. Like, when you look at you're telling me on one end that you're going to do this, what you've done in the Biden administration and all of that. But when we look at the numbers statistically with black people, I don't see the reflection. I'm not I'm not seeing it, dog. Mm -hmm. When you talk about uh, kids raising single parent households, when you talk about the real employment rate of black people, when you talk about the real financial distress we have. How much money we actually have. How much money do we actually have? We ain't got now. <laughs> Fuck, man. I'm sorry. I just, it, it drives me crazy. Y'all insane. Got now. We ain't got no money, man. Like, we'll high cap for the, for social media, and we'll tell social media I got all these things, and we'll go into debt to have things. And in real life, man, we broke. We broke. We ain't got nothing. But you do have a political voice. 
And that's why it makes it so exciting to go vote. I know it sounds corny as hell, it sounds cheesy as shit, but like the energy, I can feel the energy in America right now. Like everybody wants something. And ain't no quick fix. We gotta wanna do this thing the right way. And hey, if you're an honest person, you know it's gonna take stability. It's gonna take hard work over time to change the conditions in America. It's going we're both veterans of this great nation. We're both going through the disability process of all this paperwork and legalities to say that the injuries that I endured for this great nation, I gotta prove it to the state. And I gotta go through the process. And I think that with help, I'm gonna win. But this is a journey, man. I, I, w I wish they could just pass my stuff overnight and just say, man, overnight, you get you get all your disability. Wouldn't that be fly? <laughs> man, that would be uh, amazing. I would love America to say, man, thank you for your service. Yeah, man. That, that, <laughs> that, that, would, that, would, that would be amazing. All, all I got is my PTSD. That's all they left me with. And I got to exist in a world where people are telling me what I can and can't say. And I'm like, man, I died for you to have that those feelings. I didn't die. That's crazy. Is that what I just said? <laughs> I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I, mean, we, we, I mean, parts of you can never be changed. Like, oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? You can never change back. Man, we pull it up. We pull it up. Oh, I'm fascinated right now. Like, this is a historical black site. And they got they got all the posters up there at the shrine. Shrine of the Black Madonna. I had my I had my first book signing here. My first publishing. I, I can't have a book signing right here at the Shrine of Black Madonna. And now we finna come cast votes. Bro, are you, are you, are you excited? Man, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. And then, you know, we're gonna participate in this freedom of speech. I don't care if you vote for Kamala. I don't care if you vote for Donald Trump. I just want you to come out here and vote. Uh, before you come vote, Look at the look at the the fake ballot that's on the on the computer. Look at that. See what the policies are, and uh, pick, hey, pick somebody. Be an informed voter. Hey, be the greatest American alive. Hey, black man voting part one. We coming back. Yeah, we coming back. <laughs>